Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today I want to show you how to make this rounded summer theme diorama and we'll be mostly using some modifiers to quickly prototype the surfaces like the water and the sand. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave the like, it will really help my channel and if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more like this in the future, please hit that subscribe and additionally bell button if you want to get notified when I release something new. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender, and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. Now let's jump right into Empty Blender file and I want to leave the camera in place. So let's drag the selection and delete the cube and the light. So I'll press X and click delete. Now let's press Shift A and we'll start with the circle I want to create the base for this diorama so let's tab in and press S then 4 to scale this four times I will confirm by hitting enter now let's press F to fill and E to extrude so this will serve as our base and now let's move the cursor up a notch so I will hold shift S and snap cursor to select it now let's say about and I will press shift A and let's add a round cube um, if you don't have this option here, go into the preferences add-ons and activate extra objects add-on and you should have all these options here. And now let's click round cube and now I will go here and switch the preset to quad sphere. And you will see why in a second. Now let's tab in and press S then 4 to scale this 4 times as well. I will confirm with enter and now I'll press 3 on a numpad for a side view and let's enable x-ray. Now let's delete the vertices in the bottom half. So I will drag the selection here, press X and delete vertices. And to keep everything here on the origin point, I will hold period on a keyboard and switch the pivot point to 3D cursor. You can do it here as well. And now let's press A to select everything and press S then Z to scale on a Z axis and zero to scale everything down. So this is a one plane. And I find this to be the easiest way how to create a rounded surface like this made out of quads um, that you can displace very easily. Um, but I don't like the density right here. So I'll switch to the edge select by pressing 2. Alt click this loop right here and press Ctrl X to dissolve it. And you can do the same with this loop as well. So now we have a nice quad surface that we can displace very easily. And we'll need two of those. So let's tab out and press Shift D to duplicate. Now tab back in and I'll press A to select everything and press S to scale this down. I want the water to be inset a little bit, just like that. And now press E to extrude. And I'll press Ctrl R to create a loop cut right here and one more right there. Okay, now tab out and we can press Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision modifier. Let's disable the X-ray view and we can right click and shade this smooth. And of course, if you want this smooth as well. You can also use subdivision modifier, but maybe the bevel modifier will be enough. So let's add the bevel modifier in the modifier panel and let's reduce the amount a tiny bit, increase the segments to two, right click shade smooth and you can add one level of subdivision. So let's press control one to add that subdivision modifier and we have a nice smooth surface there as well. Now let's select the water object and we'll add that displacement. So tap back in and again, I will enable x-ray so I can do the selection easily. Let's press one on a numpad and I will switch to the vertex select and select all these vertices on top and go to the object data properties and create new vertex group and assign all of these vertices there to that group. Now tab out. I will disable this so we can better see and let's go to the modifiers tab and let's add yet another modifier and that will be displacement modifier. And this is all mess, but right now we can choose that vertex group so only the top vertices will be affected by this modifier and for the direction we can choose Z. So now this is displaced only on one axis and we can add a new texture to that and go to the texture settings and switch to clouds and of course change the scale to something like this. So this resembles water surface a little bit more. Now go back to the modifier tab and let's decrease the strength a tiny bit like this. So this will serve as our water. So let's now continue with the sand part. So let's select this object right here. Let's enable that X-ray again, 
tab in and let's look from the top by pressing 7 on a numpad and I want to delete these vertices right here so press X and delete vertices and let's now enable proportional editing right there and I want to push some of these vertices back and we can increase or decrease the fallout with the mouse wheel so we have some smoother surface right here something like this I like this kind of cut out there okay and now let's press A to select everything and press E to extrude and again we'll press Ctrl R to add those loop cuts there just like that let's disable the x-ray and now let's tab out and press Ctrl 2 to add that subdivision modifier here and right click and shade smooth so this water surface might be a little bit too high so we can always go into the edit mode press G then Z and move it down a notch just like this because the displace modifier makes it a little bit higher okay just like that and now let's go to the sand object tab in and I want to do the same as before so toggle x-ray let's look from the side select these top vertices and again we'll create a vertex group and assign all of these vertices there and now if you tab out go into the modifiers tab and we can make it easier by adding the displace modifier from the water object so let's disable the x-ray hold shift and select the water object and just go here and choose copy to select it and now the same modifier gets applied to our sand along with the group settings but we don't want the same texture because if you go to the texture settings and change it you will see we are changing the other texture as well so instead let's just click this copy and that will create a new texture for us and now we can change its properties and I don't want the clouds I will choose the wood and change the pattern to band noise and let's change the size to something like 0.5 and go back to the modifiers tab and reduce the strength something like this and of course this is too noisy but we'll remap it um, using the empty object so let's press shift a and let's add empty plane axis and now in those modifier settings we can change the coordinates from local to object and choose that empty object here so now if you select it and scale it up and down you can remap this just like that and of course you can even rotate it so these waves are kind of aligned with the beach like that and now we can go back to that modifier and you know change the strength and go back to the texture and play um, with the size here so maybe it's a little bit more smooth or less um, basically whatever you want and whatever fits your scene and now I will see I will need to raise the water level a tiny bit maybe not so much okay so this is the base um, for our scene and now let's create some palm trees they'll be pretty easy to do let's just shift right click um, to move the cursor there and let's press shift a and let's add mesh and cylinder now I'll reduce this to something like 16 vertices tap in and since this is two meters high we'll press G then Z and one to move this up um, don't forget to disable proportional editing press S and then shift Z to scale this on X and Y axis just like this let's select these top vertices press G then Z and move them up now we'll scale them down a little bit so go here and switch back to median point of course you can do that with the period key and scale this down just like that now let's press 2 to change to edge select press ctrl R to add a loop here and increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel something like this should be enough and right click to release in place and now let's press ctrl B to bevel this and now by holding alt and shift we can add all of these loops to selection and press S then shift Z to scale it on X and Y axis like this now tab out right click and shade smooth and let's go to the object data properties normals and enable auto smooth um, some of these angles might not catch so either you can decrease this angle but I found it easier just to go here and move this a little bit higher up so we catch that angle so this will be on uh, the base for our palm tree and now you can go to the modifiers tab and let's add a simple deform modifier switch to bend and you can choose whatever axis you like either y or x i will leave the x axis and now we can play uh, with the angle to bend and for now i will disable this modifier because i want to go into the edit mode select the stop loop hold shift s and snap cursor to select it now tab out and we'll create some leaves so let's press shift a and let's add a plane now tab in and scale this down just like this let's press 7 on an ampad to look from the top 
and now let's go for vertex select select these two vertices and press g then y and move them like this now i'll press ctrl r and create two cuts here right click and press s then x to scale it on x axis just like this and we can additionally scale these individually and now let's select all of these and press g then z and move them up a tiny bit and here we can move this down and we'll see later um, if this shape is all right so let's go back to the top view by pressing 7 on an ampad and let's press ctrl r to create a loop cut here in the middle right click to release it in place and now we can round this up so let's select this vertex press g twice to enable slide and press alt so we can slide it outside and let's do the same here in the back and now I'll go for the edge select, select this edge in the middle and press Ctrl B to bevel it and increase the cuts to 3, just like that. And now back to the vertex select, select this vertex here and we can enable auto merge, press G twice and slide it all the way right there. That will merge those vertices and now we can select these two in the middle, press G then Z and move them down, tab out and press Ctrl 2 to add subdivision modifier. And if you're satisfied with the shape, which I'm not because I think this needs some work, uh, maybe we can move this a little bit back or something like this. Okay, and right now we can add solidify modifier and move it above the subdivision modifier in the stack. Let's disable that X-ray and shade this smooth. And right now we can play with the thickness of that solidify modifier. So we have a nice stylized leaf. And of course, you can move it all together so it better matches the origin point position. Now tab out and let's look from the top by pressing 7 on an ampad. And now it'll be important to chain these commands um, in the same way. So press Alt, D, then R to enable rotation. Now enter 60 for 60 degrees and enter. And now, without pressing anything, if you press Shift R, you will repeat that command and create duplicates like this. And now you can play with that shape, you know, if you need this to be more narrow or more wide, whatever you like. You have link duplicates. And now let's look from the side by pressing three, press Alt D and R again to rotate this like that. Press S to scale it down. Let's look from the side and I will rotate this 30 degrees. So let's press R and 30. And now let's press Alt D, R and 120 degrees. Confirm with the enter and again, Shift R to repeat that rotation. So we have a simple palm tree. Now let's select all of these leaves and shift click this one here that points on the Y axis. So it's easier to find it. Let's press Ctrl P and parent to object. And now let's select only this leaf, select the palm tree and press Ctrl P and parent to vertex. That will basically parent that origin point to the vertex um, location of the tree. So now if you enable that simple deform, um, these leaves will travel with the tree. Um, they will not rotate, so that's something you need to do yourself, but that's very easy to do. Just press R twice to enable trackball rotation and rotate it like this. And you know you can also scale it separately up and down however you want. Now let's select the tree. I will press Shift right bracket twice to select everything. Press Alt D and Shift Z to move this duplicate right there. And let's scale this down like this and the leaves as well and of course we can rotate that and rotate the trees as well and let's look from the camera the camera is too low and too close so let's press g and z twice to move it back and a little bit up now now i have the shortcut in the quick menu but you can press n for a side panel and in the view settings lock camera to view so now you are able to position camera with your standard viewport controls and of course, right click, you can add it to quick favorites. And then when you press Q, you can just activate and deactivate it here. And let me find some composition that I really like. Okay, I think this looks good enough. Now let's finish with this and create some camping chair. So I will shift right click here and press shift a and let's add a single word and again this option is a part of that extra objects add-on so let's create that one and now let's look from the side by pressing three and make sure you are in the vertex select mode you are already in the edit mode if you added that so let's just press g and move it here and now i'll press e and extrude the shape i want 
something like this should be enough and press A to select all and G then X to slide it on the X axis and now let's add a mirror modifier here and let's adjust the proportions now enable clipping press E then X and slide it right here so it connects in the middle now let's alt click this outer loop press shift D right click to release and P and enter to separate that tab out and select those new edges in the new object and now let's disable the mirror modifier for a second and let's right click and convert to curve and now we can enable that mirror modifier once again let's go to the curve settings geometry section and increase the depth just like this and choose fill caps and now we can go back to the side view by pressing 3 and tap into the edit mode select one of these points press shift D and just move it down like this and extrude another part of the chair just like that and tab out and there's your chair and we can play with the depth again a little bit now press ctrl 2 to add subdivision modifier right click and shade smooth now let's select the cloth right click shade smooth and we can press ctrl 2 to add that subdivision modifier tab in and we can add some loops so ctrl r and create um, for example three loops um, that should be enough and now create some here so we can round up that edge nicely now tab out and I will apply the modifier um, for this part here um, that will be necessary for the shading later so let's press ctrl A hovering over the modifier to apply it and of course we can parent everything to that cloth by pressing ctrl P and choosing object and now we can move this up a little bit and of course we can choose to rotate it a little bit so it better matches um, the background and let's look from the camera by pressing 0 and let's rotate it a tiny bit like that okay and now let's play with some shading and I will switch here for cycles and choose GPU and some denoising and reduce number of samples and of course um, the tile size so we have some nice performance and let's press ctrl B and limit the view um, of course we can reduce the resolution to some other aspect ratio something like this and then select the camera and move it closer maybe okay and now let's hold shift s snap cursor to world origin and let's press shift a and create a plane now scale it up like this so it covers the whole view and now we can go to the material preview and just add some colors so for the base here um, I'm looking for some kind of violet color um, something like this should be fine and let's select the water here let's create a new material and I will need to enable transmission and reduce the roughness to something like 0.1 or maybe even less so it's really glossy and now let's change the IOR to 1.1 this will be very stylized water and now let's increase the brightness all the way and add some colors this doesn't look great in EV because we didn't set it up um, but in cycles um, this will look just fine when we add some lighting um, so let's select the sand object and create some material with orangey color just like that and I'd like to increase the roughness for these flat colors um, for the background as well and speaking of background let's add some and I think some blue color might work nicely with this setup now let's select the trees and let's create the color for those something like this um, we don't need a really dark brown color um, this will be very stylized and I like to reuse the colors so I will use the same here and now I'll create the white material for the chair create a new material slot and create a new material with the red color or maybe a hint of purple now tab in and I'll go to the face select and by holding alt and shift select these loops and assign so we have a nice striped cloth and again I will increase roughness there as well and the last thing are leaves so let's find some nice fresh green color there and maybe reduce the value a little bit and we'll see about that in just a second now let's go to the camera view and let's press shift A and let's add some light and I will choose a sunlight here set the power to 3 and press G then Z to bring it up tiny bit so it's easier to rotate I will hold period switch to 3D cursor again and press R X and 30 degrees and now R Z and minus 45 so we get this nice sunlight from the side and now let's preview the rendered 
and this is starting to look like something and I think some strong area light will be nice here so let's press shift A and let's add area light press G then Z to move it up and then R X 45 degrees minus to rotate it 45 degrees that direction and R Z 45 to move it back and we can change this to disk and give this really strong power something like 3000 uh, because the scale of the scene is pretty large and we can increase the size of the light as well and maybe rotate this a little bit and now you get all of this reflection on the water as well and now we can play with that color just like that and of course with the color of the background and in terms of the light we can bring it really close to those three and we can add some color so we have that nice summer warm tones here and now I will add another area light to create the background lighting so let's change it to disk as well let's increase the size and this will be something really strong like 5000 and let's look from the top and move it opposite to the camera just like this and move it down a tiny bit and we can increase the size even a little bit more and place it behind the trees just like that and now in the world settings I will add some violet tones and lighten it up a little bit you can see the shadows how they light up with that violet blue tone and the scene gets a little bit more vibrant now let's increase the roughness for the background as well maybe reduce the specular a tiny bit and let's play with the tones here as well and maybe we can add a secondary background light so I'll press shift D and add another light there increase the size and increase the power to something like 10,000 and move it around so we get this nice light dispersion on the background and finally we can go to the render settings color management and play with the contrast look so I will choose something like medium high contrast and maybe play with the exposure and now I can see we can go a little bit darker on the background and if you wish you can choose one of these lights and add a little bit of a blue tone to support you know that water feeling um, so you have this combination of a cyan light and really warm um, sunlight and now to make the scene a little bit more interesting we can also animate it um, that's pretty easy thing to do so let's press shift a and let's add another empty and now we can select the water uh, go into the displays options here and switch from local to object again and choose that empty second empty object um, for our mapping and now if you select that empty here in the outliner and press G then Y you can see how you can move these waves um, so that can nicely simulate the movement of the water and let's go to the output settings and choose frame rate 30 and now let's set the length of the animation to something like 120 and now let's press I to insert location for that empty and let's scrub through the timeline to somewhere in the middle and press G then Y and move it to the side like this press I and insert location and now you can just select this keyframe on the side press shift D and duplicate it um, to the frame 120 and now the water will be kind of circling in waves uh, maybe this is too far so if this movement is too hectic for you you can always you know just tone it down a little bit and insert new location and now it will be just a very subtle water animation like that and of course you can add some wind and they'll be pretty easy to do you can select the tree here go into the modifier tab select the frame one here and press i to insert that angle and now let's expand this part here and i will switch this to the graph editor so if you press n for a side panel you can add some modifier here and let's add some noise modifier for that simple deform and this is how it looks um, so if you press play you can see this jumping around and let me switch to material preview so you better see it in real time of course um, this is too hectic so let's increase the scale to something like 20 and you can have something like this of course um, you need to line up the beginning and end that's easy to do if you restrict the frame range from 1 to 120 and blend in and blend out and then you can you know move the offset so you find the curve that best fits something you want to achieve here 
and of course um, you can reduce the strength so it's a little bit more subtle and additionally you can select this leaf um, that basically controls all of these um, let me switch this to the median point and press I and insert go to the frame one press I and insert rotation keyframe and we can do the same here um, for example on the x-axis if you don't need the other axis you can just delete them with X and now select the X channel and we can add that noise modifier here as well and of course this is too much again so increase the scale decrease the strength so it's more subtle and again we can enable that frame range and maybe reduce the strength even more so it's really subtle secondary movement for the tree and of course it's easy to transfer this so if you select the tree and hold shift you can press ctrl l and link animation data so the other tree will move as well and at that point it's really easy to do same for the leaves so i'll press ctrl l and link animation data so they are moving um, in a similar way and there you have it this way with a simple modifier setup and some animation keyframes you can have this really stylized summer theme with some subtle animations um, for your design or for your website or whatever you're creating um, i really hope you enjoyed this one and if you did please leave that like it will really help me and again if you're new and you want to see more please hit that subscribe thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day